They're found in every country in the world. Some are very small. And some cover thousands of square miles. Everyone lives in one. And our actions can affect their health. Do you know what they are? The answer is watersheds, and our actions affect them. But what exactly is a watershed? A shed for water? A weird name for a rain tarp? Actually, the rain tarp idea isn't so far off. Let's look at how a watershed works. This is a watershed model, and the first thing I always want to know is if you know what a watershed is. <laughs> I don't think so. No, okay. Well, first of all, watershed is the area of land where all the water drains from the highest point to the lowest point to reach a water body, eventually to the ocean. And within this giant watershed that's all around us are smaller sub-watersheds. Like this is a real good example here. This is a farm, and you can see this slope and there's a little wetland right there. So when it rains, all that water is gonna flow into that wetland. And so that's kind of a little sub watershed there. But eventually, that's gonna overflow, soak into the ground, and then flow into that estuary right there. So we're gonna look at how the watershed is impacted by our actions. So let's start with the farm. What kinds of things do you think happen on a farm that could contribute to pollution? Pesticides. Pesticides and fertilizers. So let's put a little pollution on that farm right there. What else do we have? Waste. Waste from all the livestock. So let's go to another section here. This is a gas station. So what do you think we might find in a gas station? Oil. Oil. Excellent. Let's squirt some oil on that. Remember, as we're looking at this, these are all things that are going to end up in the water. Now we're gonna go to a high-rise apartment building. What do we have at high-rises? You have a lot of litter. litter. From all the... Waste and, and, and uh, garbage. Right. Do you think some of the people in that building might own pets? Yeah, they go out and take their dogs for a walk and create a little pet waste. Okay, now we've got a lot of stuff happening on the landscape and it's all just kind of sitting there on the ground until it rains. So you can see from this model how something that you can do 50 miles inland from the coast can affect the health of the estuary and the coastline. So that's why we want to take care of how we treat our yard and, and our landscape and all the actions that we can do to protect the health of our oceans. Conservation and keeping good water quality is cheaper than treatment. We have ways to clean up, but it's very expensive. So it's much cheaper for us to take care of our own little section of land, our own farms, our own yards, our own parks, and, and where we live so that we don't have this mess, this pollution to clean up and have to spend a lot of our money doing so. Within the Southwest Florida Water Management District's boundaries in West Central Florida, there are 11 major watersheds. Each of these watersheds contains many smaller sub-watersheds. We all live within a watershed. Which one is yours? Watersheds play an important role in the quality of life in our communities. Our health, the health of the environment, and even the health of our economy are dependent on the condition of our watersheds and their water quality. Watersheds are important because they are the areas that we live in, they're the areas that we recreate in. We fish in them, we swim in them, we boat. Watersheds function to collect water off of the land surface and concentrate it in a local water body, river, lake, or stream. However, they also pick up pollutants along the way. And one of the most important functions of a watershed is it provides our drinking water. So any pollutants that are left on a land surface will be picked up and transported, possibly into our drinking water source. 
when it rains, any excess water that doesn't percolate into the ground is actually shunted off the landscape, usually into a curb and gutter. That storm water from rain events picks up any of those excess pollutants that have been applied to the land surface, concentrates them, and transports them to the nearest water body. In the case of a lake or a stream, excess pollutants, nitrogen or phosphorus, can have very serious detrimental impacts in your system. For example, algal blooms, green color, and potentially fish kills. If healthy watersheds are so important, what do we need to do to keep them healthy? Reduce pollutants. Since pollution is usually caused by our own activities, we need to find ways to reduce or eliminate the pollutants that contaminate the watershed and ultimately our water sources. Water pollution is generally defined as point source and non-point source, depending on where it originates. Point source pollution is usually in the form of a single identifiable polluter, usually discharge coming out of a pipe. Think you can point to it, point source pollution, versus non-point source pollution. A non-point source pollution is pollution coming from an unidentifiable source. Uh, keep in mind or, or think about excess fertilizer from your neighborhood. There's no single source. Or rainfall, pollution coming from the, from the atmosphere, think acid rain. Now that we know what a watershed is, what a watershed does, and how it affects water quality, let's take a closer look at water quality itself. Good dissolved oxygen values are usually five. As important as clean water is to our lives, water quality is difficult to measure. Our water is a vast network of rivers, springs, swamps, estuaries, wetlands, lakes, and bays, and each water body can contain significantly different levels of pollution. You really can't tell much about the quality of water by looking at it, because most pollutants are invisible to the eye. Water can look clean when it's really not clean. Three major types of pollutants are sediment, bacteria, and nutrients. How does each of these affect water quality? Thorough water quality testing is a very complicated process, but there are four simple tests you can do to get a good idea of the water quality of any body of water. Their temperature, dissolved oxygen, pH, and turbidity. Dissolved oxygen is a very good indicator of the health of an ecosystem, such as a river or a stream or a lake. Uh, that tells you how much oxygen is, is there for the wildlife that lives in the waterway. Temperature is another very good indicator of water quality health. Every organism that lives in the water is temperature dependent, so that's very important. Turbidity is another parameter that's very important to measure. That tells you if there has been uh, erosion in the watershed, there are too many sediments or fine sands coming into the system. Florida's water gets a helping hand from nature through the filtering action of wetlands, elaborate ecosystems that collect excess water. Wetlands also act as a big filter, helping purify water as it passes through the system. For this reason, wetlands are often called nature's kidneys. Wetlands are an essential component of the entire ecosystem because they act as filters for not only rainwater, by storing that rainwater, the water will percolate into the groundwater or some of it will run right through those wetland systems. The vegetation and the soils that are in those wetlands act as a filter, so they filter out impurities before it reaches the river or the the spring system uh, where that water discharges. Filtering water is only one function of wetlands. They also help prevent flooding, store water for times of drought, provide habitat to numerous animals and plants, serve as nurseries to birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles, stabilize shorelines, and provide recreational areas and activities. Protecting water quality is a shared responsibility, and we need to understand how our actions affect the environment around us. We've seen how easy it is for even small amounts of pollutants to become big problems when combined with other small amounts of pollutants as water moves across a watershed. So what can we do to protect our water?
Here are five simple actions that can help improve the health of Florida's watersheds and water quality, now and for future generations. Use fertilizers and pesticides sparingly. Never dump anything into a storm drain. Pick up after your pets. Have your septic system checked regularly. And conserve water. Clean water, clean environment, and healthy watersheds means a healthier you. It all works together if we work together. It is very important to keep our watersheds clean because it's much cheaper to prevent pollution than it is to restore a system once it's been polluted. Visit watermatters.org slash watershed lessons for more information and take the Watershed Pledge.